you're in the bastard den. I'm Jimmy K. He's E Dub, of course. Bear fan. Stoli, who's an uncle. Uncle. And Lord. An uncle, actually. Are you really? <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of creepy. Couple t- I'm not a creepy uncle. <laughs> Sometimes you are, man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Lords yeah. of the Triton are here. Until I get the van. <laughs> My sister, she's a, a prostitute. <laughs> prostitute? A prostitute. Welcome to the Bastard Den, Lords. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to see you again. Yeah. This is your uh, fifth visit, I think, to the Bastard Den? Yeah, I guess so. You, you just keep giving us a free beer, so I mean. <laughs> it's the beer. Might, it's, might as well just keep coming back. Well, and you guys give us CDs, so it, it works out. <laughs> yeah. Show up, at, show up at 3 in the morning, like, ding, ding, ding. Hey, 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 is there a radio show going on? <laughs> Need a beer. Get some, get some beer with that. <laughs> Just patch me in. <laughs> Lords of the Triton, a brand new CD out. It looks awesome. Yeah. I like the name, too, Chains on Fire. Congratulations on the new CD, guys. Thank That's you. That's awesome. Uh, it comes out this Friday, right? That's correct. And uh, we'll talk about the CD release show on coming up this Friday at the Annex. And uh, you better be there. What was it like recording this? I mean, uh, going to the studio, it, was it just, was it, were you guys all business like about it? Was there a little tongue in cheek going on? Let's do another CD or? <laughs> um, painful? I, I think your mic is off. Oh, yeah, no, one of the mics is off. Okay. Uh, give him the. Ba- you bassist, give him your mic. Is your mic off too? Uh, I think I'm here. Oh, okay. No, no, we got, we got so a you, you answer his question. Oh, I was going to say it's like <laughs> this. I went to a basement and got a beer, and then I played bass a bunch, and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. L- I mean, luckily for us, I was able to. We, we did all the recording ourselves um, in in our you know our, our basement studio, also known as Junko Johnson Records, uh, also mo- also known as the Mohorovic Discontinuity, uh, 13 miles below the Earth's crust and whatnot. But, yeah, uh, we, were <laughs> we were able to do... Um, uh, we were able to do all the recording ourselves, um, just like last time, uh, except for this time we really, you know, we really upped kind of how we did it, and and um, and uh, we kind of retooled a lot of our techniques. And I think, you know, when you hear the album compared to the last album, you'll definitely hear the difference. It's, you know, it's, even when you hear it right now, when you guys play the play the songs, you'll, if you're familiar with the last album at all, I think you'll um, probably be very surprised at the difference between you know, one to the other. Um, but you know, it was, it, it took a long time. It was really, uh, in some parts it was fun. Some, most parts it was painful. I think Aki can attest to the painful part. It, it was horribly painful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, we, we had a fun time doing it. And the nice thing was, is that we did it ourselves. So, you know, we didn't have to worry about, Oh, you know, it, when, when we were doing take 137, which we had a couple that were take 137. <laughs> I'm not joking about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't have to say, you know, geez, we're 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 running out our dollars here, you know, we're running out of money. We're, you know, we gotta just we we gotta just say, okay, it's it's good enough. So we didn't we didn't we didn't ever get to the point where we said it's good enough. We always made sure it was perfect to you know what we thought at the time we could do to the best of our ability. So you know, another nice thing for you guys doing it yourselves, um, you know, you talk about the the money aspect, and and there's a lot of bands that we've had in here who. Like you guys, you know your your budget is extremely limited, and um, they have a friend do it, somebody that they know, and so they're kind of on borrowed time. They have to go in and and wait for somebody else to do stuff for them or to be available, and so you get you get a time crunch that way. So that's good. Definitely having friends is having friends that know how to do things is is one of the you know prime pri- <laughs> probably the the uh, premier thing that makes this band work in a sense. You know a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff that we do, like I guess our first DVD, you know, it was a friend uh, that uh, you know knew how to do video productions and that kind of stuff. She helped to put us together. Um, the LED light up guitar that spins around that was a combination of my dad's know how and a friend who was a uh, PhD student in uh, electrical engineering. So if you ever nice. have any friends who are PhD students in electrical engineering, you know, you need to make those friends right away because I mean, <laughs> if you're like wiring your house or you know yeah. something goes out on your computer, boom, you know they'll be there with one of those electrical. Uh, red and black things that you know <laughs> display voltage. I don't know. I don't know anything about right. that. So but you're how not you're not an electrical engineer. So I'm not electric. How do how <laughs> yeah? <laughs> but boy, they can make blinky lights go on just about anything. So <laughs> who did most of the mixing for you guys and mastering? Well, the <laughs> yeah, the mixing that was me. Uh, but you know, I gotta hand it to these guys too. The rest of the band, um, they really you know listened 
quite you know intently to all of the tracks all the times that I threw them out there and gave me suggestions on what to change when to change it you know this is too hot this is too too quiet that kind of stuff right. um, the mastering actually we kind of lucked out we got um, uh, through uh, again friend of a friend uh, we got uh, Mr. Jake Johnson of Paradigm Studios here in Madison to do the mastering which I never I, I never ever thought that uh, he would actually you know do because he's I mean he works with uh, uh, big name bands. He's worked for uh, he's worked for like Lucas Arts. He's uh, mastered for Metallica, for Dave Matthews Band, for Steve Vai. So we're like, yeah, this guy's gonna master Lords of Trident CD. And then uh, and then he said, yeah, and I was like, wow, <laughs> that's awesome. So I mean, yeah, Paradigm Studios got to give a shout out to those guys. Really, really excellent mastering. So. What, what does that actually mean? The mastering. Well, what happens is is uh, so when you record a bunch of individual tracks, right, and the mixing. Uh, is when you go in and you change the levels of individual tracks. So, oh, I need to make this guitar louder. I need to make the bass drum quieter. I need, you know, the this is too tinny, this is too bassy, that kind of stuff. During mixing, you can change individual instruments. And then what you do is you export it all down to like a stereo track. So you have one track, everything's all mashed together in that track. And this is kind of like the unfinished, you know, uh, almost fi- almost final thing. Then you send it out to the mastering agent. The master, what the mastering agent does is, at this point, he can't change individual instruments. So where you got it set is where you got it set. What he can change is he can change the overall sound of the entire album. So he'll probably like line up the tracks and make sure, you know, this track is the same volume as this track. This track has the same amount of treble area as this track, and you know, basically he uses a bunch of compression. Um, and uh, it makes it sound louder so that, you know, if you play it on the radio next to, like, Metallica or next to Foo Fighters or whatever, it's not going to be like, Foo Fighters, real, real, real loud, and then it starts to try it really soft. Okay, <laughs> turn up your radio dial. Turn it up. Sky Force. Uh, let's play a couple of songs off the uh, brand new CD. And it, it's a privilege, by the way, you guys are giving the bastard done today by coming in and letting us play the songs for the first time. Sneak preview. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's awesome. The, the title track to the CD, Aki, Chains on Fire. Tell us about that, man. Uh, actually, it's kind of an interesting song in that uh, actually uh, Ty, uh, myself, and uh, Elliot, uh, us three kind of all uh, kind of contributed almost equal parts to the song. Um it actually uh, was an idea that uh, Tai uh, Feng uh, kind of originated. He kind of had the chorus, and he was playing it on uh, an acoustic guitar, and I, I heard it, and it was just an idea at the time. But uh, uh, as soon as I heard it, I was just like, oh, this definitely has to be made into a song. It's it's catchy, and uh, yeah, just uh, the chorus like immediately uh, appealed to me. And, and then Aki made it not suck anymore. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I, I put together a verse and a pre-chorus, and I kind of altered some parts here and there and <laughs> so he That's took your crappy idea <laughs> and made it into gold he's like a turd polisher or <laughs> exactly. you, know, he, you know he can he can polish them with the best of them That's so. awesome <laughs> nice yeah. it's nice to know people yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> he's he's our premier turd polisher <laughs> it comes full circle i tell you it's chains on fire lords of the triton in the bastard den for no rock radio 